Hey everyone, on today's episode of Hero Hype, boom shakalaka! With the release of Madden 16 coming up, I thought it'd be a great time to look at the history of jolly sports games. I'm not talking about simulations, NBA 2K, NBA Live, or Madden, super serious. I'm talking about jolly, over-the-top sports games. Let's look at a few right now. So if you follow the show, you know I have an affinity towards Sega Genesis. Underrated system. Host of Mutant League Football, released in 1993. Now, I never owned this game, personally. My good friend, who lived down the street, had a copy, and I used to go over to his house after school and, and just play one-on-one, -on -one, all day, non-stop. Mutant League Football. In this game, it's post-apocalyptic. Humans have turned to flesh-eating monsters. Zombies have risen from the dead. This is a game about killing your opponent. If you kill enough of the opposing team, they have to forfeit the match and you get an immediate win. Now, sports games are really competitive. Okay, and, and just adding this layer of wanting to kill your opponent physically in the game just had this, this, this mission that you were on, you know, it was, it, it was more of, oh, I'm gonna beat you. I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna make you forfeit. This game isn't gonna be won by points, field goals, touchdowns. It's gonna be won by blood. Some of the traps, there's like fire pits, spike pits, uh, each team has special moves, they can, they can just rip your players in half. You can bribe the referee uh, once per half and he'll make phony calls on the other team. But what you want to do when you're the other team is kill the ref. It's just absolute chaos and a jolly good time. Next up, NBA Jam. Probably the most uh, familiar game on this list. It had a uh, quite a life in the arcades and has been on pretty much every system ever made. NBA Jam. I mean, if you don't even like basketball, this is just a great video game. What I love most is how wacky the unlocks are. You can unlock presidents. I remember like Bill Clinton was in one. You can play as the mascots. Uh, it was always really fun in the arcades, just trying to mash all the buttons and get all those like secret unlocks in the in the arcade. Everyone's just mashing the controls, and and just whether you're playing one on one or two on two. I mean, this game has it all. It's got the great co-op, on fire, pass into your team, slam dunk op. So are you seeing a trend? Very aggressive game. You can just push the players when they try to score. And the announcer. I mean, the entire success of this franchise should be attributed to the announcer. Just all his little quips, just getting people riled up, getting in the zone. He's heating up! He's on fire! He's on fire! So you have to score three times in a row with the same player to go on fire. I can remember this from a gameplay point because if I was one basket away from going on fire, I don't care if I'm on double coverage, if my buddy's wide open under the basket, he's not getting the ball. I'm scoring, I'm going on fire. And it was always an event. Anytime someone was on fire, it was like Super Saiyan. Unstoppable force, drilling threes, drilling dunks. It's game over. Last on the list, Magical. It's a magical game. It's close to my heart. Hot Shots Golf. In Japan, known as Everybody's Golf. Same game. Oh man, where do I even begin about these games? It is just a pleasure to be on the on the front nine, the back nine. Just every single map in all of these games 
is just a wonder to behold. They are just beautiful and gorgeous. Now with Hot Shots Golf, it's, it's great for a lot of reasons. I mean, you have this wacky cartoonish aesthetic, okay? Everything, it's very deceptive. It's kind of a ratchet and clank situation. Now it looks childish and cartoony, but it's actually a really good golf simulation. It has realistic physics and you actually need to play a, a logistical game of golf. It's not just like smack the ball, you're good. You have to, you know, lay up or, or manage your power shots. You have to think like a golfer. So it really appeases both ends. You know, if you're not into golf, I think the aesthetic is what really sold me. You can customize your character. I can remember Hot Shots Golf had Kratos. I mean, just really clever unlocks and cross promotions of games. I remember Kratos when he, uh, when he like shanks the ball, he's like, by the gods, gets all pissed. You dare defy the ghost of Sparta. Now for whatever reason, this game just gripped hold of me. I became obsessed for over a year with Hot Shots Golf 4 and 3, and it just carried over. It was like an addiction. I just couldn't stop playing. You just kept wanting to beat the opponent. I remember the progression. It's all about the progression in this game. You go through the tournaments, and then you go through a challenge mode. To unlock characters, you have to beat them in a one-on-one -on -one duel. So it was just always like, try, you know, that carrot on the stick, that MMO style quality of just wanting to continue and continue and just unlock a little more and a little more. And one of the biggest things on Huber Hype 2 is environments. I mean, this is a place I want to visit in real life. If someone was like, yo, you can go to, you know, a couple gameplay environments, you know, pick one. I think uh, Island Delfino would be, be near the top of the list. Hot Shots Golf would be right up there. Honorable mention on the spot. I'm ashamed that I didn't think of this until 10 seconds ago. We're talking about Jolly Sports Games. Who the hell am I to not bring up Virtua Tennis? So if you're a Dreamcast fan, you know the term, it looks like a Dreamcast game. It has a Dreamcast vibe. Virtua Tennis, the pinnacle of that. It has a Dreamcast vibe and aesthetic. It's just got the tunes and the look. It's hard to put your finger on it, but if you grew up with the Dreamcast, you know what I'm talking about. Virtua Tennis, competitive. My brother and I, showdown every day on our living room floor. Just rally, 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 lob, lob, spike. Just nonstop in this game. I remember Brandon Jones. We're gonna get Brandon Jones in here one day to talk about this. Virtual Tennis Enthusiast. Talks about the competition. This game was so simple, but so hardcore. There was so much to think about. It was just tactics. It was mind games. It's like, am I going to pull up on my lob shot here or am I going deep with a strike? And like all good sports games for me, you know, it's all about progression and unlocks. There was like a world tour mode. You had to travel around the world battling people and climbing the ranks. And let's not forget the challenge mode. Just bashing your tennis ball into giant bowling pins, knocking them through rings. It's just jolly. So jolly sports games. I'm not a very competitive person. You know, I, I like my co-op or my single player. And when I look at, at Madden or NBA 2K, I mean, these games are aggressive. You know, you, you step in online and, and people are intense. It's like Call of Duty or something. But there's something about that jolly aesthetic that is inviting to me. I feel home, I feel comfortable and I get riled up. Just wanna crush my opponent, or in Mutant League, I wanna kill him. So last week, we had the pleasure of talking about WWF games. I'm sorry if I offended any Edge and Christian or Hardy Boys fans out there. You know, they're that, that, that triple entente of tag teams, the glory days of tag teams and tables and ladders and chairs, 
it'll never be beat. It'll never be recaptured. I'm sorry. It, maybe that's a pessimistic or cynical thing to say, but by God almighty, those were the glory days. But we had some great comments. Let's read a few. First up, Sand1. Pacific Rim, four words, oil tanker baseball bat. That's right. You know who didn't like that? Kyle Bossman. Next up, Maxman820. What? Kojima is on Pacific Rim 2? So awesome. A Metal Gear Ray cameo would send me into a tailspin. It'll never happen, but a man can dream, no. Yes, you can always dream. Don't stop dreaming. Anything can happen. We could see a Metal Gear cameo. If anyone was going to do it, it would be Del Toro and Kojima together. Del Toro would be like, yeah, sure, let's put a Metal Gear in here. How awesome would that be? It could happen. But you know who didn't like Pacific Rim? Kyle Bossman. Next up, FBCQ7334923533. As God is my witness, he is broken in half! Good old Jim Ross, legend. Jim Ross himself made the Attitude Era as graphic as it was. It wasn't the people beating each other's heads in with baseball bats, blood dripping them from their face. It was Jim Ross setting the tone, setting the aggression, just screaming, Stone Cold! Just psycho. It, you know who didn't like Pacific Rim? Kyle Bossman. The Quantum Leaper. Edge is the greatest wrestler of all time, and for those of you with the benefit of screenshot photography, I present to you a thrown gauntlet to Huber that the Dudley boys have nothing on the ENC connection. Tables, psh, try ladders, chairs suck, go away hardy boys. You are mistaken. I get really personal when anyone's talking shit on the Dudley boys. Ladders were the Hardy Boys. High-flying, Jeff Hardy, Swanton Bomb off the top ladder. Edge and Christian were chairs, the concerto! That's it for the show. Coming up on GameTrailers.com and our YouTube channel this week. Heaven's Ward review, it's coming, baby! I'm at Michael P. Huber. If you like jolly sports games, you let me know, because I'm not a big sports fan. I love baseball, and if my dad is in the room that I am also in, I love all sports. You know, it's just that, that father-son vibe. But uh, even if you don't like sports, let me know if you like jolly ones. And if you don't even like jolly ones, let me know also. Let's, let's talk this out. Let's get through this. Uh, <laughs> see you next week. Time for Huber's Coop! Playing Assassin's Creed Unity over the weekend. Not as horrible as everyone says it is. It's an okay game. Solid 7.0. But that's not my Q game. But it got me thinking when I was doing those weird Helix missions in occupied France, I thought of the Saboteur! Underrated gem. Solid game. Good story. Good character, good aesthetic, black and white when it's hopeless. As you get more hope, you get more light. It's always fun killing Nazis, it'll never get old. Check out The Saboteur.